Hola. Hola. Buenos, días. Buenos días. Feliz día antes del Día de Muertos. Happy day before Día de los Muertos. Mi nombre es Laura Radinoff. I serve gratefully as the treasurer of your Board of Trustees. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno, California. Welcome to everyone on our online church campus. Welcome to everyone on our Alluvial Avenue church campus. We are one congregation in many places. Welcome to our annual Dia de los Muertos service. If you are on our online campus, I encourage you to be sure that you have a pen and paper for our ritual of remembering your loved ones who have passed into the mysteries of death. You can also go and get and bring close to you pictures and mementos of loved ones for your own Dia de los Muertos altar. We acknowledge that our Alluvial Avenue Church campus sits within the traditional homelands of the Yokuts and Mono peoples. We acknowledge them as the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. Here, at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno, California, we welcome you, no matter your race, culture of origin, age, spiritual background, or religious beliefs. We welcome you no matter your disabilities, the amount of money in your bank account, or your level of education. You are welcome with or without documentation, con o sin papeles. You are welcome if you are lesbian, gay, bi, trans, gender fluid, questioning, or non-binary. Todos son bienvenidos aquí. I want to acknowledge our video tech, Ian, and our sound tech, Nico, who have put hours and hours of patient work into honing the sound and video system for live streaming. Let's offer our applause. <laughs> or type I-N for Ian and Nico in the chat box. Today, on our virtual campus, we are going to try an experiment. We are aware that during our time of joys and sorrows, those of you on our online campus may be typing in the chat box and talking among yourselves, but the Alluvial Avenue campus hasn't been able to see your joys and sorrows. So, we are inviting you to share your joy, sorrow, concern, or gratitude in the chat box now. Yes, begin typing your joy, sorrow, concern, or gratitude now. <laughs> and we'll write them down and give them to Reverend Tim so he can include them in what he shares. We are going to give this a try and see if it works. So please share now in the chat box. Before our service begins, let's take a moment to safely greet one another. In, by chat box, in person at Alluvial Avenue, or in the silence of our individual hearts. As we prepare to enter into our service where we honor those whom we love, 
who have passed into the mysteries of death. I invite you to allow the sound of the tingsha to carry you to that quiet, gentle place beyond pain and sorrow, that place where love resides. One of our guides for this service will be our beloved Merlinda, who will be joining us from our virtual campus for several songs today. And as the lights lower, please give a warm round of applause for Melinda Espinosa. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Eva Viotto, and I'm the Sunday Morning Children's Program Coordinator and Worship Associate. Buenos dias. Mi nombre es Eva Viotto. Soy la coordinadora del programa de los niños y Worship Associate. If you are on our virtual campus, you might want to bring your chalice or candle close as we will be lighting it soon. Let your voice join mine in our chalice lighting response. When I gesture to you, you'll respond, recuérdame, remember me. Can we try that together? Recuérdame, remember me. One more time, recuérdame, remember me. En este domingo de celebración del Día de los Muertos, on this Sunday of celebrating the Day of the Dead, we listen for the whispers of spirits within us, among us, and beyond us. Recuérdame, remember me. Recuérdame, remember me. 
whisper the voices of los antepasados, the ancestors, heard in the stillness of the stones. Recuérdame, remember me. Recuérdame, remember me. Whisper the voices of nuestros antepasados, our ancestors, heard in the rustling of the trees. Recuérdame, remember me. Recuérdame, remember me. Whisper the voices of our departed loved ones, heard in the crackle of the candle's flame. Recuérdame, remember me. Recuérdame, remember me. Whisper the voices of those who have gone before, heard in the pause between our inhale and our exhale. Recuérdame, remember me. Recuérdame, remember me. Whisper the voices of those who have loved us and left us, heard in each beat of our heart. Recuérdame, remember me. Recuérdame, remember me. We ourselves will one day whisper as we too pass into los misterios de la muerte, the mysteries of death. Recuérdame, remember me. In the spirit of remembering, I invite you to light your chalice or candle on our virtual campus while Reverend Tim lights the chalice here in our Alluvial Avenue Sanctuary. As we sing our song of praise, if you are on our Alluvial Avenue campus and brought a picture or a memento of a loved one who has died, please bring it forward and place it on our Dia de los Muertos altar. Let's rise in body or spirit and join in singing, Morning Has Broken, Surge la Aurora, Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for the springing fresh from the world. Surge la aurora. La primera, cuanta luraca, voz inicial, lora al canto, lora al alba, y a su principio trascendental. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light is our praise. Praise with elation, praise every morning of the creation of the new day. I invite us to remain standing as we say together the words of our church's mission statement. La misión de la Iglesia Unitaria Universalista de Fresno es amar inclusivamente, crecer espiritualmente, servir con gratitud y trabajar por la justicia. The mission of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno is to love inclusively, grow spiritually, serve gratefully, and work for justice. Please be seated. 
So welcome to our Dia de los Muertos service. Pre-pandemic, this is always one of the most popular services of the year, and it is an intergenerational service. So our kids are with us usually for the entire service. Right now, it's not safe for them to be in this space for any elongated amount of time because they are currently unvaccinated. But we felt we needed to see them, celebrate them, and have them be part of our service. So in a moment, I'm gonna step outside and talk to the kids for maybe two, three minutes, and you'll be able to hear me. You can use your imagination to see me. And then we are gonna bring the kids in, and they are going to be placing golds on the Dio de los Muertos altar. So Eva and I are gonna head out. You'll be able to hear, and we'll be back soon. So could we get, uh, they're going to get the marigolds when they come step in? Okay, very good. So hey everybody, how are you? Thanks for being here. Great costumes, awesome, sci-fi in the back, love it. So there's Yoda, Yoda in a pumpkin, only at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno. So when you are ready to come in, we're going to give each you a marigold. Can you all just say that? Marigold. marigold. Marigolds are the most popular flower in Mexico, in Mexico, because when you see the bright yellow color or the orange color, it reminds us of all the fun that you've had with family and friends. So I want everybody to think of one thing you've done either with your family or your friends that was really fun and made you really happy. So let's take a moment and just think of that. And is anybody willing to share one thing that you've done with family or friends that made you happy? Or anybody willing or are gonna be shy? Okay, that's all right. So when you get your flower, what I want you to do is take a moment and think of that happy memory of family and friends. Also, these flowers remind us of the happy memories we've had with pets who may have passed into death. Some of us may have had loved ones or relatives who have passed into death. These flowers remind us of the happy times that we've had with those who are no longer here. How many of us saw the movie Coco? Anybody see the movie Coco? So these are the flowers that lead all the spirits back over that big bridge so they can come back and visit with their families on Dio de los Muertos. So the flowers remind us of happy times and those who are not here. And as Merlinda begins to sing Remember Me right now, we are going to begin the ritual. You'll come in and we'll guide you to the altar where you can place your flowers. And Miss Chloe, could you give kids flowers as they come into the sanctuary? i 
And let's have applause for our kids and Melinda. So I invite us now to take in a breath, breathing in peace. We hold the moment. We breathe out love. Again, breathing in peace. We hold the moment, we breathe out love. One more time, breathing in together. Peace, we breathe out love. As we continue breathing together in this place that we make sacred with our breath, with our heart and our intention either here on Alluvial Ave or on our virtual sanctuary, together as one community, to be together, to remember, to remember love. As we breathe, we let the breath carry us back over the last week, the last seven days that have been, and a question. In the last week, did you see, hear, or experience something that gave you hope. We carry that hope for some of us, it's a big chunk of hope. For others of us, it's the, the tiniest of morsels. But know that tiny little bit of hope is a seed that will grow. And we carry this hope into our time of sharing joys, sorrows, gratitudes, and concerns. Some of us stopped at the small table at the entranceway to the church and wrote down on a card what we wanted to share. Others of us, at the start of the service, put it in the chat box. Our experiment worked, and we have from our virtual campus as well. I'm so excited about that. Des and Nico, back in the sound booth, their joy is their baby, Eli, who is back training to be the next sound tech, is two months old today. Yay. Oh, it's so wonderful. Leslie is so happy that Babs is here. There you are, Babs. Give it up for Babs. Ian wants to ask for love to be sent to Hannah and our son Jonah this week. They are my angels. 
people and I love them. Cheyenne's joy is she got to be a 1920s lapper girl for Halloween last night. The sorrow is she misses her boy Star, but I know he is in a better place and having a party with and for us all. Bev F. is grateful for all those who worked yesterday to fill the Wings Warehouse with furniture from storage. Jamila J. is joyful that she is in Elk Grove with Lisa and her family. Uh, Charlotte is feeling grateful for the hope that my children will soon be safe with the vaccine for children under 12. May it be so. We have two sorrows today. Paula S., two family members, cancer has returned. We hope medical science can heal them again. Paula, we're holding them in our thoughts. And for all of us, we hold Ida Jones in our heart and her family. This is the second anniversary of Ida's son, Kenneth, passing. Her oldest son, two years ago, passed into the mysteries of death. And Ida, we love you and we send you so much prayer energy, light, and hope to you in Elk Grove with your family. We have a celebration and a sorrow. This, we continue to celebrate LGBTQ plus history month. Um, our sorrow is that the board of Fresno Pacific University voted to not allow the LGBTQ student group to be formed because they are a Christian congregation and believe they are practicing Christian values. The Jesus that I see in the Bible invited all to his table and said, love one another. We invite, <laughs> we invite Fresno Pacific University to follow Jesus' example and to love one another. And if, if you're on our virtual campus and you'd like to support the young people who are trying to form that club, please type the number one. We're with you. Yesterday in the sanctuary, we had a love-filled wedding as we celebrated Jamie and Lucas's beautiful love. They discovered us online during the pandemic, fell in love with the church. We fell in love with them. They're such remarkable young people. And they and their family and friends gathered for this wedding. Any wedding that starts with music from the Lord of the Rings and ends with a theme from Star Wars <laughs> means they have blessings from both Middle Earth and a galaxy far, far away. I'm happy to report Bernadette P. is feeling recovered now from COVID and we send her our continued thoughts. Um, we lift up our beloveds who are unable to be with us today because of health or compromised mobility. Glenda R., Pat M., Babs E., Rita T continuing to recover from surgery, Robin G who continues in hospice care, Al G and Bill N. We also lift up today John, the beloved grandson of Judy K, Judy Kuypers, I'm going to just say so we know. Uh, he is a young man of 22. He had two emergency brain surgeries at the end of the week and is currently in an uh, induced coma. We are sending love and light and prayers to John, to Judy, and their entire family. And so, for all that has been shared, for all that we hold in the sacredness of our own hearts, and for all those who have no one to remember them, no one to speak their name with gentleness or care, we light our candle of community. We light a second candle for the over 
five million citizens of the world who have now died in this pandemic. 765,000 are citizens of this country. Never imagine we would say that number, 765,000. This candle here uh, was lit at Anna's celebration of life, Anna Richards. It was lit by Elliot. This morning in our Dia de los Muertos service, I invite Anna's sister, Alice, to come forward and light for Anna. This candle burns for a fresh loss. We also want to lift up church member Walter Bruff Stevenson III, who died unexpectedly. And I believe there's his picture. We send his wife, Gib, our light and our love. And we, as she holds the memory of family, children, and grandchildren, and remembers all the love and laughter they shared this past Sunday when they were all together with family and friends. Um, holding you, Gib, in love. We also have a tradition that on the first anniversary of a church member's death, we light a candle in celebration. Today, we light a candle for Pat Pickford. Pat's ancestors were European immigrants who came to the Fresno area in the 1880s. She was one of eight children born December 21st, 1922. None of her siblings graduated from high school except for Pat, who went on to graduate, graduate from Fresno State and then did graduate work at UCLA. Pat was hired to teach at Fresno State and in 1960, she and a colleague founded the Department of Social Work which later became the School of Social Work. She taught there until she retired in the early 1990s. Thousands of her students graduated from the program that she founded, and those young people have grown and left their impact, improving the lives of countless people. Pat and her longtime life partner, Marie, were devoted members of this church for a year. Marie died in 2000. Pat was passionate about social programs, social justice, and Pat was a generous contributor to our church. Her enormous donation to the capital campaign was a major reason we made our goal and were able to build here on Alluvial Ave. Thank you, Pat, for all you have left to your students, your family, and to this, your beloved church. And we light this candle in celebration of her life. And as this trio of candles burn, we sing our prayer. Comfort me, consuela me. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me. Comfort me, O oh my soul. Consuela me, consuela me, consuela me, O oh mi alma. Consuela me, consuela me, consuela me.
Háblame, 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 oh mi alma. Háblame, háblame, háblame. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Our words of prayer and reflection are attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. We will hear the traditional words in Spanish and a freely adapted Unitarian Universalist version of these words in English. Let us join together in the spirit of mindfulness prayer. Let us pray. Oh Dios, hazme un instrumento de tu paz. O oh, Spirit of Life, help us become an instrument, a channel, a people of peace. Donde hay odio, que lleve yo el amor. Donde haya ofensa, que lleve yo el perdón. Where there is hatred, may we bring love. Where there is wrong, may we cultivate the spirit of forgiveness. Donde haya discordia, que lleve yo la unión. Donde haya duda, que lleve yo la fe. Where there is discord, may we create harmony. Where there is doubt, may we inspire faith. Donde haya error, que lleve yo la verdad. Donde haya desesperación, que lleve yo la alegría. Donde haya tinieblas, que lleve yo la luz. Where there is error, may we speak truth. Where there is despair, may we nurture hope. Where there are shadows, may we shine light. Oh Madre, haced que yo no busque tanto ser consolado, sino consolar, ser comprendido, sino comprender, ser amado como amar. O life, O mother of us all, grant that we may seek more to comfort than be comforted. May we seek to understand rather than to be understood. May we seek to love rather than to be loved. Porque es dando que se recibe. Perdonando, que se es perdonado. Muriendo, que se resucita a la vida eterna. For it is by self-forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by realizing we are part of something greater than our own wants and needs that we awaken to the mystery, the beauty, and the infinite possibilities of life. Amen. Amen.
de mis ojos que lloran en silencio por tu amor. Me miro en el espejo y vio mi rostro, el tiempo que he sufrido por tu adiós. Obligo que te olvida el pensamiento, pues siempre estoy pensando. Before Eva shares, uh, two thoughts are going through my mind. One, one of the great gifts of our virtual campus is we can be joined 
by musicians from literally any place in the country safely. Uh, how wonderful that we were able to celebrate today with Fresno's own Merlinda Espinosa. Yep, go ahead. As, as anybody who listens to my attempts at Spanish knows, I do not speak Spanish well, uh, and I understand it uh, un poquito, uh, but so much comes through her, her, her love eternal when she sings. It just, she thrills me. We had a spiritual lesson earlier in the service that I want to point out <clears throat> when the children were coming forward, the attention that they put into finding the exact right spot to put their marigold in. I think that's the attention to life that we should aspire to. And I think that's the attention to life that Dia de los Muertos reminds us of, that yes, there are the tears of death, but while we have the gift of life, let us be as attentive as a child placing a marigold on an altar. Poet Mary Oliver writes, to live in this world, you must be able to do three things, to love what is mortal, to hold it against your bones, knowing your whole life depends on it. And when the time comes, to let it go, to let it go. But we all know how hard that letting go can be. Throughout the evolution of human religious practices, those who came before us created many ways to let go of and remain connected to their dead. Dia de los Muertos is a meaningful reminder of this impulse. It is a celebration that blesses both those who are living and those who have passed into the mysteries of death. Dia de los Muertos began in Mexico, but now celebrated throughout Latin America and in many parts of the United States, turns death on its head. It meets death and loss not with tears and grieving, but with a colorful fiesta, full of food and drink and handmade altares, altars. Dia de los Muertos is an assimilation of cultures combining ancient indigenous traditions with the colonizing Roman Catholic beliefs brought to Mexico by the sword and oppression of Spanish conquistadores. Altares, altars, are a beloved part of Dia de los Muertos. The two levels, or three levels, of the altars harken back to Aztec cosmology and are a representation of the division between the earth and sky, between the fruits of the land and the elements of air, rain, wind, sunshine. The altares also reach back to the worship of the Aztec goddess Nichicasawadl, also known as the Lady of the Dead. She ruled the underworld and watched over the bones of those who died, which the Aztecs believed were a source of life in the next world. Her grinning skull is strongly associated with Dia de los Muertos. Calaveras, candy skulls, represent the deceased loved ones who are receiving offerings at the altar. Their names are often written on the foreheads of the skulls. They are usually created out of granulated sugar, meringue powder, and water. The sugar reminds us of the sweetness of life we enjoy before we die. In a burst of playfulness, children usually eat the skulls after the celebration has ended. A strand of papel picado, perforated paper, represents the thin veil that separates the world of the living from the world of the dead. The veil through which our beloved dead pass back into the material world of the living. The holes in the papel picado allow the souls to travel through and visit. In many cultures, 
It is believed that at this autumn time of year, the veil is at its thinnest, which is why the dead can so easily walk into our world of the living. Last week, our children made strings of papel picado, and we've hung them in the breezeway, where they now sway in the breeze along with the Buddhist meditation flags the kids made back in September. You will see them when you leave the sanctuary and head to the parking lot. Which souls do you wish could pass through the veil to visit you and your home? Often, there is an arch above the altar symbolizing the entrance into the world of the dead, the same entrance the loved one's spirit will walk through when they come and visit during the festive celebrations. Salt is placed on a plate and is said to purify the soul of the dead and ward off evil spirits. Salt or lime is used to draw a white cross on or under the altar and if you come to the altar after the service, you'll see the cross that Eva created. This cross, though, is different from the ones that we're used to seeing in Fresno. They represent the four directions and the four primal elements, earth, air, fire, and water. These primal elements were central in Aztec religious practices and are represented on our altar by a stone, earth, a feather, air, fire, and a melting ice cube, water. A glass of water is sometimes placed on the altar to quench the thirst of the deceased and strengthen them for their journey home. Sweet and soft bread shaped like a bun and often decorated with bone-shaped pieces is pan de muerto, bread of the dead. The bones represent the disappeared one and there is normally a baked teardrop in, on the bread to represent the goddess Chimalma's tears for the living. In some oral traditions, it was Chimalma's spirit that accompanied the Aztec people from their original homeland of Atzlan, somewhere in the north. Photos placed on the altar were always of someone who has died. Otherwise, they won't be drawn to the altar and can't cross over. The yellow and orange marigolds become a bright and sweet-smelling guide that the spirits can follow into the mortal world. They are often called the flower of the dead, flor de muerto. Ofrendas, offerings placed on the altar, are items that the spirits will enjoy when they come back to visit their living family and friends. These typically include food and drink they enjoyed while alive, hence the can of clam chowder that my dad always enjoyed. And it includes, when appropriate, a bottle of beer, that one's for you, dad, and a shot of tequila, which is over there as well. The souls that visit their altars do not actually eat or drink what is on the altar. They can't, they have no bodies. Instead, they absorb the aroma and energy of the food, which nourishes them spiritually. Unitarian Universalist minister Victoria Weinstein writes, there is no need to end our relationship with our dead, for they are still ours, still our struggles, still ours to struggle with, to learn from, and to love. There is no time, timeline for grieving them, and there is no finitude to loving them. Shortly before his own death from throat cancer, the great Unitarian Universalist minister Forrest Church reflected on love and death, saying, death is love's measure, because when we ourselves die, the love we have given to others during our brief span, span of days is the one thing love can't, death can't kill. The one thing that can't be taken from us, even by death, is the love we give away before we go. Valerie Carr reminds us, joy is the gift of love. Grief is the price of love. As we celebrate Dia de los Muertos, 
Let us celebrate the complex interconnection between life and death, joy and grief, and love and loss. Let us now participate as we are willing and able in a ritual of remembrance. Under each chair in our alluvial lab sanctuary is an index card and a pencil. You can reach under and get that now. Index card and pencil. If you have paper and pencil at home, you can also use it now. First, fold the index card. If you're seeing somebody struggling to get under their chair, could somebody help them? That would be great. First, fold the index card in half so it makes a little tent, so it'll be able to stand up ultimately on the altar. Now, let's take a moment, both virtual campus and alluvial lab campus, to think and feel who is it that you want to remember on this Dia de los Muertos? Just before you even write, just think and feel, who is it that we want to remember today? And I invite us to write those names on the card or on the piece of paper at home. moment, we will see a cavalcade of photos of loved ones, but before we then participate in the ritual, I want to give us instructions on how to safely conduct the ritual that will begin once we've looked at all of the pictures. We're going to invite those who feel comfortable on our socially distanced side to come first and come to the altar, place your names anywhere on the altar, and then head back to your seats. If you don't feel comfortable moving in the socially distant space, honor that, and you can place those names at the end of the service. Um, once everyone who has wanted to share from the socially distant side, and just be mindful of distance from each other, uh, you can self-monitor, I trust. Um, once you folks have gone, we're gonna invite those of us on this side to come forward down this aisle, cross, place anywhere on the altar the names you want to remember, and we ask that you go back down to the center aisle and circle around. Once all of you folks have gone, then we're going to invite the middle section, and please come down this side, place your cards, and then head back to your seats through the center. Um, if you don't want to come forward, you can always hand your card to somebody to bring it for you. So that's the safety. First, second, and then third. In a moment, as Lorenzo's piano music fills our sanctuaries, we will watch as the images of our loved ones appear images some of us in advance of this moment emailed to the church when these pictures have passed tim will then invite those in our alluvial avenue campus to come forward if they wish to the altar on our virtual campus as the spirit moves you you can then add the names of those you love who have passed into the mysteries of death by typing their names into the comment box Know that as you remember them, their love lives on in your heart and through your life. And Nico, if you could bring the lights down a bit, our photos begin.
dicen el negro llorona, negro pero cariñoso. Todos me dicen el negro llorona, negro pero cariñoso. Yo soy como el chile verde llorona picante, pero sabroso. Yo soy como el chile verde y orona picante, mero sabroso.
problem, it's just the briefest, briefest. It's not even a reflection, it's just a reflect. <laughs> Only at a Unitarian Universalist church celebrating Dia de los Muertos would you begin with a quote from a Muslim mystic and poet. <laughs> That's what I love about us. The great Muslim mystic and poet Halaluddin Rumi writes, my heart is so small, it's almost invisible. How can life place such big sorrows in it? Look, life answered, your eyes are even smaller, yet they behold the world. Dia de los Muertos focuses our attention on the colorful wonder and joy of life, even as it holds a sacred space to feel life's big sorrows. Dia de los Muertos binds together dual realities. We love this life and we must leave this life. That is what Valerie Carr names when she so succinctly states, joy is the gift of love. Grief is the price of love. Some of our joy is big. Weddings like yesterday, Jamie and Lucas, births, graduations, promotions, retirements, a successful surgery, and so much more. We all know our big joys. And some of our joy is small joy. In fact, I think most of our joy is small joy. The delight and pleasure that can be found in the everyday, in the ordinary. Of small joy, poet Jane Kenyon writes, I got out of bed on two strong legs. It might have been otherwise. I ate cereal, sweet milk, ripe, flawless peach. It might have been otherwise. I took the dog uphill to the birch wood. All morning, I did the work I love. At noon, I lay down with my mate. It might have been otherwise. We ate dinner together at a table with silver candlesticks. It might have been otherwise. I slept in a room with paintings. I slept in a bed and planned another day, just like this day. But one day, I know it will be otherwise. Dear ones, when life places big sorrows in our hearts, May we find the strength to hold them. When life invites us to behold the world, may we open ourselves to the colorful wonder and joy that is here. Que así sea, bendito sea. Amen. We're going to have some colorful joy. We're going to sing. And we're going to sing with the joy that is part of Dia de los Muertos, De Calores. Please rise. De Calores, De Calores se viste en los campos en la primavera. De colores, de color son los pajaritos que vienen de afuera. De colores, de colores es el arcoíris que vemos lucir. Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. Por eso los grandes amores muchos colores me gustan a mí. And let's slow that down just a bit, Lorenzo. 
What? <laughs> let's slow it down a little bit. <laughs> it was How too about many for the words. English? So let's pick all it up all the colors. All the colors, all the colors the trees love to wear when the fall touch of reason. And all the colors, all the colors the birds dress themselves in for us in the season. All the colors, all the colors we see in the sky when the rainbow appears. All the colors are bound for the whole world around and for all whom we've known through the years. All the colors are bound for the whole world around and for all whom we've known through the years. De colores, de colores se visten los campos en la primavera. De colores, de colores son los pajaritos que vienen de afuera. De colores, de colores es el arco iris que vemos lucir. Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. Por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustarán. Please be seated. So tonight, when it gets dark, I'm going to put out a tray with a bowl of candy, and the kids are going to come and trick or treat. This is your opportunity to trick or treat on our <laughs> virtual campus and on our alluvial Ave campus. It is your gifts, the treats you give the church through your financial support that allow us to sustain this congregation in a pandemic. As I said the previous week, our, our amount of inflow from our virtual campus since we reopened here on Alluvial Lab has really slowed down. Uh, we need you folks who are on our virtual campus. It can be a dollar, it can be five dollars, it can be ten dollars. I know some of you even give a thousand. Thank you. Um, but we need the support if we're going to continue bringing these services into your homes each Sunday. So trick or treat, we hope from you all it will be a treat. The morning offering will be gratefully received. I did I put the slide in here? I don't. Yes, no, I didn't. So we're not going to do our words of offering. We're just going to let you go right to the giving. I give many thanks for the gift and opportunity to be a part of this morning's celebration in community with our church family, both in person and virtually. Through these intentional practices, we continue to be one congregation in many places. Thank you. As we prepare to end our service and enter into our afternoon, please join us in our chalice extinguishing words. Extinguimos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad, el calor de comunidad, o el fuego de nuestro compromiso. Estos los llevaremos en el corazón. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts. So a few quick reminders. Chalice circles are starting up our small group ministry. Um, if you want to turn this as a place which you visit to a place where you feel like you belong, chalice circles are the easiest way to do that. We have a record number of people who have signed up for those chalice circles. We hope you will too. Next Saturday at 10 a.m. on Zoom, I will be offering, along with Patty Bennett, our crash course on Unitarian Universalism. If you want to know more about this wild and wacky faith tradition, please join us next Saturday, 10 a.m. 
New Member Sunday is coming up on November 14th. If you feel like this is the time to become a member of this splendid congregation, please talk to Patty at the membership table out front or on the chat in the chat box. Just uh, you can uh, indicate and Patty will check the chat box and get back to you. How you leave the sanctuary safely. We're going to allow our socially distanced folks first to head out the door, passing, I might add, the baskets for those of you who want to drop checks, cash, or gold bullion right in there. And um, then we're going to invite all of you folks to safely pass through those doors. Anybody who would like a shorter exit because of mobility, you get to go right up the center aisle. Kiddos, you can pick up in the breezeway at the Religious Exploration table. And speaking of religious exploration, I want to, we haven't seen Eva in the sanctuary for a while because she's been out with the kids running our Sunday morning program. Give it up for Eva! <laughs> Eva, Eva is rebuilding our religious exploration program that really was, took a hit during the pandemic, but slow but sure, we're adding families and kids again, and I'm excited. And last but not least, before Eva offers the closing words. If this is your first, second, or third time visiting the sanctuary, we would like in a moment to gently welcome you. We don't do it to embarrass you, but we're genuinely glad you're here. So if this is your first, second, or third time, please just rise for a moment so that we can welcome you. We won't leave you standing by yourself for long. So first, second, or third time, please rise. Yay, welcome, well, all the way from France. Welcome, 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 welcome. I invite the rest of the congregation to rise with them. Eva ends the service. Please place your hands over our precious beating hearts as I offer these closing words from Anne Moreau Lindbergh, followed by our sung benediction. We are not snuffed out at death but absorbed into a greater flame. No somos apagados por la muerte, pero absorbidos en una llama mayor. May it be so, blessed be. Amen. 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 Go from here in peace. Go Thank you all. If you have objects that you need to retrieve from the altar, we're going to invite socially distanced to do that first, then the rest of the congregation, and we will, anything left, we'll try to get back to you, and all of the name cards will be uh, burned in a sacred ritual of celebration of life.